Hey everybody, welcome to Demi Stuff. Thank you so much for joining, watching, all that good stuff. Um, today we're going to be trying out two wines at the same damn time. Um, we're going to be trying a Pinot Noir and a Beaujolais, which is Gamay. Um, I'm going to be comparing the two just because there are some similarities between um, between the two grape varieties and also between the ways that they were fermented. So I thought it would be cool to check out what's similar and different. I find that I learn more when I compare two things together instead of learning something just in a vacuum of just one thing at a time. So please come learn with me. Um, I'm gonna try to show you the wines that I am doing. So we've got the uh, Willamette Valley Whole Cluster Pinot Noir. Got them in my decanters. And then I've got the Beaujolais Nouveau for you. And we are going to be checking those two out today. Um, and I was really excited about this because I love Beaujolais. If you watched a previous video, you know I love Beaujolais. But I also really like Pinot Noir that hasn't been really messed with it too much. It hasn't been overly oaked, overly processed. It just is very pure. And um, so I get both of those today because the process that this Pinot Noir went through was a much more natural, uh, much less interference in this process. Um, and the reason for that is because they did a whole cluster fermentation. And how that differs from normal fermentation processes in most wines around the world is that in traditional fermentation processes, they'll introduce yeast, either the uh, native yeast that's part of the grape structure already, or um, they'll also inoculate with um, commercial yeast to start the fermentation process. And the yeast traditionally is what will eat the sugar in the grape and it'll create um, alcohol and carbon dioxide. So it metabolizes the sugar and you get alcohol and bubbles. And um, so that's traditionally how it's done. However, um, what Beaujolais did that kind of put them on the map is that they did a whole cluster style of fermentation and I believe they were like kind of the pioneers in this area um, and in Beaujolais they would instead of introducing yeast to crushed grapes they would ferment they would allow the grape fermentation to happen inside the grape cluster they would not crush the grapes they would have the whole cluster in a big fermentation vat and they would allow an enzymatic process to occur inside the grape and instead of the yeast metabolizing the sugar, it's now the enzymes that are in the grapes that are metabolizing the sugar um, and that process gives you different uh, flavor compounds in the grapes than you would with the yeast fermentation and so you get a totally different expression of uh of the wine of the grape in the wine so uh the uh other thing that the pinot noir that we're going to be tasting today is known for is that they also leave the stems for the whole cluster obviously the stem is a part of that and so the stem is what is imparting tannins tannins are the kind of the drying effect that you get on your mouth when you um, when you drink wine and there's a finish where it's uh, got kind of almost like it can sometimes be chalky, chocolatey, um, oaky, um, depending on what they do to create tannins. And for this uh, Pinot Noir, they it sounds like instead of using any oak, so there's no oak involved that I can tell, they um, implemented the use of the stems. The stems impart tannins, the stems of the grapes impart tannins that can have um, a, a, a flavor that's like black tea or spice. I got um, 
just off the bat, um, and I'll taste with you guys, um, uh, I got nutmeg um, as a spice when I was tasting this Pinot Noir. So let's compare and contrast. Let's start out with the benchmark, which is Beaujolais, so we'll taste that first. Pardon me. Pour a little bit more in there. There we go. And this Beaujolais has a really pretty garnet color to it. Um, and it has kind of clean watery legs, which is typical for a lighter bodied style of wine. Uh, Pinot Noir and Gamay grapes uh, both are lighter bodied. The Gamay grape is actually a cousin of the Pinot Noir grape, so they do have characteristics that are similar, and one of those characteristics is their body, which tends to be lighter. Um, and on the nose for this Beaujolais, I'm getting a lot of uh, herbaceous notes, um, and also that, that characteristic tutti fruity <laughs> kind of raspberry flavor that is uh, kind of a benchmark of Beaujolais, and it's definitely here in this glass of wine. Um, yeah, and it's got, it's got some fresh fruit going on, some fresh raspberries fresh plum and then it's also got that kind of candied fruit characteristic as well. Let's take a taste. So it has, um, for a Beaujolais Village, it actually has a lot of body uh, on the attack when I first take that first sip. There's um, a presence of tannins right away, and the fruit characteristics, the same stuff that we were smelling on the nose, the, that tutti fruity kind of raspberry candy flavor is coming through. Um, and then the finish, you get more of the um, dried herbs and the kind of like black tea tannins. Um, but the tannins are consistent all the way through on this wine. So it's actually got, for a Beaujolais Village, which is just above the base level version of Beaujolais, which is Beaujolais Nouveau, then you have Beaujolais Village. And then there's a bunch of other crew Beaujolais that are possibly more muscular and more floral and more intense. This one actually has a lot of body, um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, and this would probably go really well with um, meats uh, that are like uh, poultry, uh, game, um, duck, goose, um, uh, a lot of game birds probably would be really good with this particular wine. Um, let's move on to the whole cluster Pinot Noir from Willamette Valley. Uh, and this, if you can see in the glass, it's a little bit, I hope you guys can see, it's a little bit lighter. Um, the last wine had a, kind of like a garnet color to it, and this one does too, but it's got almost like a more watery characteristic, and there's more, like, it's more, uh, got more blue tones than orange tones in it. Um, mm. On the nose, there's a lot of earth. So in the last wine we tried, it was herbaceous. Um, there was probably some earth. I didn't catch it right off the bat, but I would guess that there's some earthiness to it. This one has uh, more earth that I'm detecting right away. Um, and I really... I really love that. It's not, it's earthy without being funky, um, which is awesome. And it's also got hints of cranberry, which is really characteristic. This is very classic Pinot Noir flavor, just cranberry, earth. And I just love 
being able to pick that out because these days so many people um, over process Pinot Noir they put too much oak on it they just try to do too much with it they over process it and then you lose the purity and the beauty of what the Pinot Noir grape is supposed to taste like so this seems to have kept that purity and I love it it's just beautiful This is a lot lighter viscosity. When I say viscosity, I kind of mean like the thickness of the liquid, the weight on the palate. Um, it's a lot lighter than the Louis Jadot Beaujolais. Um, it's got very clean, I'm getting a little bit of orange peel, um, definitely more cranberry. Um, the acidity is there, it's bright, but it's not overbearing. Um, there's still earthiness on the finish. The, the tannins um, remind me of black tea, kind of like how we were talking about with the stems being included in the whole cluster fermentation, and that's how that imparts tannins. That black tea is the flavor of the tannins that I'm tasting in this wine. This wine is light, and you can definitely pair this with um, seafood. Um, not all seafood, but I would say definitely like salmon. Um, I think you could even do sushi with this and then just lighter styles of food. You could definitely do this with a salad um, and you could do this with um, possibly like some slow roasted chicken with herbs. Um, you can do like an earthy risotto with mushrooms. Um, I think that this has, these, both of these wines are very flexible. I would like to, I would like to drink both of these with a charcuterie. Those of you who know me know I love charcuterie and I get stoked about it. So this is it right here for charcuterie. Um, but in general, this is just a really pure, light, light-bodied style of Pinot Noir, and you can really, I think, the whole cluster fermentation allowed the purity of the grape to come through the purity of the flavors of Pinot Noir to come through, um, and I really appreciate that. Even though it is light and watery, um, it's true to the grape, <laughs> and uh, I actually do appreciate that because I, when I want to drink a Pinot Noir, I don't want it to taste like a Cabernet Sauvignon, and that's what some wine producers are doing with Pinot Noir these days. So between the two, um, they both went through a whole cluster fermentation. Um, they both have uh, very light um, fruit flavors that are exceptional. Um, the Beaujolais was far more herbaceous. The Pinot Noir was far more earthy. Um, and I think that these styles of wines are for people who don't want to who like red wine but don't want their palate to be fatigued after drinking a half a glass. So I definitely recommend either of these for a little bit different types of food. The Beaujolais for game, the um, game fowl, the uh, Pinot Noir for uh, salmon, sushi, chicken, all that good stuff. So um, thank you so much for checking this out with me. I thought it was really fun. So I hope you had fun as well, and uh, I hope you guys drink some wine because holy cow, we're in the middle of clown show election season, so cheers. God's in control.